Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm going to be making some delicious beef birria. Now with this birria, I'm also going to make some quesa tacos. They are super out of this world and I know you're going to love this recipe. Now today is my Ron's birthday and this is what he requested. So that's what I'm going to make. I'm going to be posting all the ingredients right here on the screen and I'm also going to post them below in the description box so you'll know exactly what I'm using and how much. So let's get started. Now I've got my heat set on medium and I've got a deep pot as you can see right here and in my pot I had water it's about to come up to a boil. Now right here on this plate I've got four neck bones as you can see they've got a little bit of meat on them and some bone. I've got four pieces. Now I like to use neck bone when I make birria because there's very good flavor in this bone. So I'm going to go ahead and put them into my water. And I'm going to let them come up to a light boil. Now to my water I'm going to add one tablespoon of salt. Now I've got tomato bouillon chicken flavored and I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. This is going to add a fantastic color to our birria and it's also going to give it an extra kick. Now I've got five bay leaves right here. I'm going to go ahead and add my bay leaves into the pot so that they can start releasing their flavor ahead of time. I'm going to add two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar into my pot. Now the white vinegar will break down the proteins in the meat and that is what's going to give us the most tender birria. Now I'm just going to let it come up to a light boil. So while I wait for the water to come up to a boil in this pot, I've got my spices right here in my molcajete. Now as you know I like to use a molcajete to grind my spices. This is what's going to give you the best flavor in your birria when it's nice and fresh. Now I've got some peppercorn right here and I've got some cumin and I also have some whole cloves as you can see right here and I'm going to grind all this together to put into the pot. Now I have ground my spices now I'm going to add some water into my molcajete and I'm going to bring it all in together. Now I'm going to pour it into my pot. Just like that. So now that I've added all my spices in here, that's going to be a kick start for this birria. I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid and I'm going to get started with my chilies and the rest of the ingredients. So these are the chilies that I'm going to be using today. I've got eight chile guajillo, I've got three chile ancho, and I've got three chile pasilla. Now as you can see, I have removed all the seeds, and I have washed them, and they are nice and dry. I usually do this in advance so that I don't have to be taking the time to do it. So all the seeds and the veins have been removed, see, and the pasilla. So they're nice and clean and ready to go. So I've got three pounds of chuck roast right here. You want your meat to have some nice marbling because that's what's going to give your birria a fantastic flavor. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them up into pieces. This way they'll cook a little bit faster, just like this. Now you can use any meat that you want. I like to use chuck roast because this meat is ideal for low and slow and falling apart meat. So in this non-stick skillet I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable oil like that and I've got it set on medium high. I'm going to go ahead and sear my meat. I like to sear my meat because I think it's a very important step. To make the best tasting meat or a stew, you want to sear your meat 
because what's going to happen is going to caramelize. And you see that brown liquid that forms at the bottom? Now that brown liquid is the protein broken off from the meat and it caramelizes to a beautiful brown. Now also the crust that we're going to get on this meat is what's going to add a lot of flavor to our finished birria. Okay, so I've gotten the other side seared. I'm going to go ahead and add them into my pot. Now I'm going to do these other pieces right here. So now I'm adding in the rest of the pieces into the pot. I'm going to replace the lid and let those come up to a light boil. Now I've got my heat set on low medium and I'm going to start by roasting my chiles. Now you don't want your heat set up too high because you don't want to burn your chiles. You just want to toast them and you'll know they're ready when they start changing colors but you don't want them to get black. And you don't want to leave them alone because if you burn your chiles then you have ruined your birria. So you want to make sure that they're just lightly toasted. Now that they are very aromatic and I can smell them and they have changed their color just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put them into this deep saucepan that I have with water. And it's in a low medium. I just want them to be simmering in there so they can start getting soft. And I'm going to continue with these others doing the same process just like this so these are the last of my chiles and they're ready I'm gonna go ahead and put them into this deep saucepan like that get them all nice and submerged under the water just like that and I'm gonna go ahead and let them simmer there until I'm ready to use them now I've got my cast iron skillet here and I've got my heat set on medium. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Just like that. Now I'm going to roast my onions. I've got one medium onion. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them into pieces about this size. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and drop them into my cast iron skillet. Because I want to roast them really, really good. Now I also have three green onions. I think you know that I like to add green onions when I make a dish. So I'm going to put them in there. And I've got one serrano pepper. I'm going to throw my serrano pepper in there too. Now I have been removing all the protein that has formed up on the top. And I have left it real nice and clean. Now you always want to make sure that you remove that protein that forms up at the top because you do want a very nice and clean broth. So I'm going to replace the lid and let it continue going. My onions and my serrano pepper are starting to roast really beautifully. As you can see they're starting to get color and this is what's going to give you a fantastic taste in that birria. I've got six garlic cloves right here. I'm just going to give them a quick mash just like this. Because these are going to be next. Now as you can see, my onions are nice and roasted. They have a beautiful color on them, just like that. Now I'm going to add my garlic. Just like this. Now while they roast in there, I'm going to start with my tomatoes. So I'm just going to cut my tomatoes into big pieces. Just like that. Now you don't want to leave it in here too long because you don't want your garlic to burn. But since it's in with the onions, it's just fine. Now I also have one tomatillo. I'm going to cut this tomatillo into four, just like that. Oops. 
So it's been one minute, and as you can see, the garlic has gotten a little bit of color on it too, see? Now I'm gonna add my tomatillos and my tomatoes. Now along with all these vegetables, just a little piece of a cinnamon stick. I'm going to drop it in there so it can roast with everything else. And that piece of cinnamon stick will release its flavor in here. So now that my tomatoes and my tomatillo have started to get a little bit mushy like that, I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of water. And I'm going to let it simmer in here for about three minutes. I'm gonna put them into the blender. And I'm gonna pour in all the liquid. Now here, I also have my chiles that have been simmering all this time and they are totally ready to go into the blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here. Now that I have my chiles in the blender, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of oregano, two teaspoons of onion powder, half a teaspoon of thyme, and half a teaspoon of marjoram. Some of you may know it as mejorana. I'm gonna go ahead and replace my lid. And I'm gonna blend it really, really well for about a whole minute. And everything is beautifully blended now. Now this blender blends everything up beautifully, but I'm still gonna go ahead and run it through my strainer. So now I'm getting ready to put all my blended mixture into the pot. So I'm gonna use this strainer and I rigged it, as you can see, so that it can go into the pot like that. Look at how well it's rinsing it all out. Now I'm going to discard all of this and put in the other half of the blender mixture. So I've gotten the last bit of it in here. Now as you can see, you don't want none of this in your birria. And I got every last bit from the blender. A beautiful color. Now this would be a good time for you to taste it because like I said in the beginning, you want to be adjusting your salt slowly, a little bit at a time. But with the salt that I put in and the tomato bouillon chicken flavored, it's usually just perfect. But you adjust it according to how you like it. So now I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid. I'm going to wait for it to come up to a nice steady low boil. And I'm going to let it cook like this for approximately two and a half hours. So while my birria is on the stove, I'm going to start preparing my toppings. Now I've got my limes cut up into wedges like this, as you can see. So I'm going to be using Oaxaca cheese. As you can see, Oaxaca is a little stringy. It just looks like a long rope, see? Now you can use any type of cheese that you want. I like Oaxaca cheese when I make birria and the queso tacos because of the taste. You can use mozzarella, you can use queso asadero, you can use Munster cheese, you can use Monterey Jack, but I like Oaxaca cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and grate it. And just do the best you can to grate it. See? So now I'm going to get started on my cilantro. I've got a nice big bunch here. And I'm going to chop this up really well. And I'm done with my cilantro. So my birria is done. The meat is literally falling off the bone. 
Look at that. As you can see, there's grease that's up on the top, and that's a natural grease from the chuck roast. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'm just going to skim it off like this. Look at the beautiful, rich color. See? And I'm going to go ahead and just remove as much as I can from the top. And we're not going to discard it because we're going to be using it later. And then I'll show you. So I'm removing the meat out of my pot like this. And by taking it out like this, I'll be able to get rid of all the bay leaves and the bones, as you can see right there. See? Now I removed everything out of the pot and I transferred it over to my Dutch oven. And it's just a beautiful, clean consomme. Look at that. See? I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid, and I'm going to start shredding my meat. So I have removed all the bones and the bay leaves, and as you can see, I've got the beautiful meat right here. I'm going to go ahead and chop it up really good like this. So because birria takes time, you want to make sure that you make yourself good amount now this was three pounds of chuck roast and look at how much it makes so if you have any leftovers depending on the size of your family if you have any leftovers you can let it get nice and cool and then I like to put it in freezer bags and I put it into the freezer and then you'll always have it ready for later use and there's so many things that you can do with this birria so I'm going to continue chopping my meat, just like this. So as you can see, I've got my beautiful consomme here. Now I've got my shredded meat right here, ready to go. So I'm going to put it back in here. Look at that. So I've got this non-stick skillet right here on my stove, and I've got it set on medium-low. I'm going to add a little bit of this grease that we had left over, remember? Just like that. And I'm going to get my corn tortilla, and I'm going to go ahead and put them on top like this. Now flip it over. And I'm going to do another one because I like to double them up because they're kind of thin. See? See? Now I'm going to get some of my Oaxaca cheese. Just put a good amount right here on the inside. Just like that. And I'll get some of my beef. And I'll put the beef right on top like this. And that's why I put the double tortillas, because you can see it's a little bit bulky. Now I'm going to go ahead and serve my consomme right here. Look at that. See? So I've got my consomme and it's nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead and put some onions on top. Just like this. I'm going to put some cilantro. And I'm going to put some of my delicious hot salsa. I'll go ahead and put a link above so you can see the link to my delicious salsa. And I'm going to add a little bit of the Oaxaca cheese on top like this. Now into my queso tacos like this and open them up. They're very hot like this. And I'm going to put some onions in here. 
just like that. Some cilantro. And some of my delicious salsa. Oh. I'll squeeze some of this lime juice on top. Mmm. Cilantro. Now this is not real neat, clean eating. I love to dip my queso taco in here like this. Now for the taste test. So this is my beef birria and consomme, my queso taco. Thank you.